Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 build we have all about Lazel as the ultimate fighter mage. We won't be going with Eldritch Knight because trust me what we have is way stronger. After all you combine both the best of magic and melee with multiple attacks per turn, each capable of dealing a lot of damage, even area of effect hitting smites, with full complete spellcasting progression that's level 1 to level 6 spells just like a full wizard, with fast access to the most powerful defensive buffs in the game such as Blur and Mirror Image, together with even damage spells, and of course, debuffs, utility spells, and even summon spells. We have around 7 coming from just our Lazel here, for a very versatile and powerful True Gish Fighter Mage character. So without further ado, let us get into our Lazel Fighter Mage build, first with character creation. When it comes to class, I really wanted Lazel to be a fighter mage type of character because it's quite lore appropriate for her race. In case you didn't know, the term Gish in Dungeons and Dragons comes from the Githyanki race. They're all about combining martial prowess with spellcasting. And while you can go with fighter and eldritch knight, I'm afraid it is quite poor compared to for example Bard. Because Eldritch Knight has extremely delayed spellcasting progression. For example, you'd only get access to second level spells at level 7, we get it right at level 3. By this point, our Lazel would already have level 4 spells with our class combination. No such luck with Eldritch Knight. As a matter of fact, you would even finish the game at level 12 without access to level 3 plus spells. Meanwhile, our build will get the full possible level 6, without any delaying spellcasting progression as well which makes for a much more fun type of character when it comes to playing from the start. Thankfully, through the Bard class, we can have the best of both worlds. After all, the very OP Swords Bards at level 3 will already get multiple attacks, is a full spellcaster as early as level 1. And later we can combine it with, let's say, Wizard and Paladin for other fun stuff like access to all wizard spells and free smites, for a much more powerful and versatile fighter mage. I definitely start with Bard, especially because by virtue of being a Githyanki, Lazel already comes with proficiency in the weapons we want, great swords. So she will get to wield a huge great sword, quite in style for her character. And for those that think a Bard doesn't fit her well, as Lazel herself puts it, there you go. As far as stats, strength is the way to go after all we want to wield powerful two-handed weapons. Therefore, assign a plus 2 to it, then start with 16. If this build was the main character, you could go with 17 instead, but I don't think you'll be wasting the plus 1 power up from a certain boss fight in Act 1 with Lazel. I mean, you can if you want, in which case you'd go for 17. I just imagine you'd rather have that on your main character. We also want Dexterity, so assign a plus 1. And if you're wondering why, well, the reason is simple as always, initiative. I have said this so many times, but if you act first before the enemy, you often strike them into submission, which means you outright kill the entire enemy party, or, well, whatever is left will be severely crippled. It really is that good, because remember, it's a turn-based game. Time is frozen during your turn, it's not like enemies can do anything. Of course, you can always go with the gloves that set your dexterity to a thing, available as early as chapter 1. But I'd rather use other types of gloves, just saying you can go that path if you want, in which case feel free to dump your dexterity, but I would much rather respect for low dexterity only after you get the gloves, because trust me, having enemies go before you for the first turn, well, it puts you at a massive tactical disadvantage. I personally cannot stand it, but it's up to you. 14 constitution as always for some nice hit points, and for the other stats, well, because you'll be going with Bard, it doesn't hurt to dump intelligence and start with 10 charisma. You can go with even 12. While you'll be getting wizard spells later, it doesn't matter if you only have 8 intelligence because you can acquire a headband that sets your int to 17 as early as Act 1. And when it comes to enemy crowd control and 8 wisdom, well, that's why we have high dexterity. If you act first, it's not like the enemy is going to be able to crowd control you. Not if they're dead. Decent enough charisma also helps you with the dialogue checks, right? Which means Lazel can work as your party face. She already has athletics, 
from her background, which is great, to resist being pushed by enemies. I would also invest into acrobatics. And for the other ones, well, just deception and intimidation are more than enough. You can also choose perception or something else. By virtue of being a Gifianki, Lazel can acquire a proficiency in all of the wisdom skills or intelligence ones, there's a lot of them here, for free. Once per long rest. So I wouldn't bother investing into any of them. You can even have her go with performance if you want. And remember, you can dump charisma as well. Now, as far as cantrips and spells, as always, please remember that I already have a best spells guide you can check to the side here, where I cover each spell choice in depth. For now, let's keep it short and simple. Blade Ward, 100%. It only makes you take 50% less damage from all physical strikes, including ranged. Be sure to prep buff with it before battle starts. And I'd also pick Light. And for the actual spells, you don't want to focus on DC spells, because you don't have the best charisma, something like Fairy Fire, for example, which has a saving throw. I'd rather on utility buffs and spells that don't offer a save. Ideally, Long Strider, because you can cast it an infinite amount of times, out of battle, and everyone wants extra movement speed. Plus Healing Ward, our Lazel will be able to heal allies as a bonus action if needed, with full scaling. Heroism can help early on, but does require concentration. And Sleep, the king of early game crowd control, because it doesn't offer a saving throw at all. So it doesn't matter if you have low charisma. The starting instrument is up to you, I'll be going with Hand Drum, because I think it fits Lazel the best of them all. For the second level, we still want our Lazel to remain a bard for a while because of all of the nice bonuses yet to come. Don't forget, this is when you get Song of Rest for an extra short rest. For another spell anything you want, I'll be going with Speak with Animals, because you can also cast it as a ritual spell out of battle. Level 3 is huge for our Lazel because it's when we get to pick our bard subclass, and of course we want College of Swords. All of the abilities here are extremely versatile, Ideally, you want to go with Slashing Flourish as to be able to hit two enemies at once, whenever they are in range, with even extra damage, and you can actually smite these two enemies at the same time, once we get Paladin levels, of course, so long as you set your smites as reactions. But let's say you're fighting just a single boss, and there's no other enemy nearby. Well, just go with Defensive Flourish for a massive plus 4 to your AC, and if the enemy is close to an edge, Mobile Flourish to push them into the void and instantly kill them. Sadly, the Slashing Flourish doesn't seem to be able to hit the same enemy multiple times, unlike the ranged variant, but it's just the way it is. For the fighting style, go with whatever, because we'll just be wielding a massive two-handed weapon anyways. And both the styles here don't help with that. Level 3 also means the second level spells. Ideally, Cloud of Daggers, because it's nice area of effect damage early on, without a saving throw. And because of your mobile flourish, you can always push enemies right back into the cloud. We also want another spell, so be sure to, let's say, unlearn Heroism or Sleep, and grab either Silence or see Invisibility. Now, for level 4, you have two different options. You can keep your Lazel as a pure bard until around level 6, or level 5, but I'd much rather get a level into Wizard now, because, well, multiclassing into Wizard is quite broken in Baldur's Gate 3, because unlike 3rd edition or Pathfinder, so long as you have a single Wizard spell level, you'll be able to learn all of the Wizard spells by using scrolls. And as if that was not enough, multiclassing into classes that have full spellcasting progression, like Bard, which we have, and Wizard now, means your spellcasting slot progression will also be increased by full. For example, our Lazel as a level 4 bard and level 1 wizard casts spells as if she were a level 5 bard and level 5 wizard, at least for spellcasting slot purposes. Like I said, it's quite OP, I'm not sure why they decided to implement it this way, but hey, we'll take it, right? I mean, just one level into wizard is enough to make you an archmage, but okay. For cantrips, don't bother with the ones outlined in yellow, because you already have them as a bard. It's not like you'll be using them, but just go with something like Shocking Grass, because you can cast it at melee, plus Firebolt, and let's say Bone Shield or Ray of Frost. For wizard spells, you'll just be learning them from scrolls anyways. It's fine familiar for the Raven Pet, because it can fly and inflict blind on hit without a save, Fog Cloud, because it doesn't offer a saving throw, Shield, amazing for defenses, this is definitely the must-have pick here. 
Pulse Life for temporary hit points, Magic Missile because it can always hit the enemies, and later we can debuff them with this, and a certain piece of gear. The other option is up to you. Like I said, you can just learn it all from scrolls anyways. For the fifth level, I would go back into Bard. We still want some nice bonuses from it. Any cantrip here, might as well pick friends even if it doesn't fit Lazel or just Mage Hand. You can kinda pick whatever spells you want as a bard now, because as I said before, you'll just be using the slots for wizard spells. Including for example Haste, because you can cast it at level 5. Anyways, I'll just grab Silence because you don't get this as a wizard. Githyanki get Mrs. Step for free at this level, which is quite powerful even if it's only once per long rest. Now, for our first feat, I would definitely go with Great Weapon Master. We'll get quite a lot of attacks per turn with this build, around 9 to 10 eventually. And well, having a massive plus 10 static damage boost added to all of your hits is amazing. The minus 5 penalty doesn't matter, I mean, I even have a guide on how to maximize your 2 hit chances, you can check to the side here, with multiple sources covered. And remember, you can always turn this on and off at will, in any case. At level 5, Bard. Don't forget, our Bardic Inspirations will now be restored on a short rest, which means more spammage of your Flourish Swords Bard abilities for more attacks. And any spell you want. Level 7 will be our last level into Bard, because it is when we get the second attack per turn, quite handy to have. And once again, any spell you want. You'll just be using the Wizard ones, which are way better. Now, level 8 is when I would multiclass our Lazel once again. This time into Paladin, because we'll get the powerful smites. With full spellcasting slot progression, by the way, which means way more smites per long rest, and of course, higher damage on our smites. While Paladin doesn't have full spellcasting progression, the amount we'll get here as levels will be enough to still allow us to acquire level 6 spell slots. You can go with any subclass. Oath of Vengeance definitely fits Lazel the best. It's just that you won't be getting level 3 into it unless you want. So the abilities kinda don't matter that much. And of course the second level into Paladin at level 9 for the highly useful smites. And great weapon fighting style. For higher damage on average. You can just choose to prepare the special Paladin smites if you want. Now for level 10, you also have a few different options. You can continue into Paladin now, it's just that if you do it, you will not be able to get level 6 spell slots, because at this level, Paladin does not grant you any spells. So you'll be locked out of the highest spells, which I find a bit disappointing in a build that wants to be the ultimate fighter mage. It is sad that you'll lose the Vow of Amity ability, but I'd much rather level 6 spells. You can also continue as a bard, it's just that you won't get anything that special from it anymore. What I would personally do is resume progression into Wizard. This way we can choose the Abjuration School, for the Arcane Ward special ability. It's not that it's gonna matter that much at this point in the game, but at least it offers something unique, unlike Bard or Paladin while still fully continuing your spellcasting slot progression, with the added bonus of being able to prepare more wizard spells. And well, you can kinda pick any spells you want as a wizard, because chances are you already learned the spells you want from scrolls as early as what, level 4? <laughs> so go with whatever. And after build progression, I'll show you the best spells to prepare as our fighter mage, Lazel, anyways. Now it's just a matter of remaining a pure wizard until level 12. And for the last level, you have a few different options when it comes to feats. You can, for example, pick ability improvement into strength, which I find a bit wasteful because at this point in the game, you already have access to a certain pair of gloves that set your strength to 23, way better than what, 18 or 20 if you were the main character. Dexterity is a choice as well, but we only want it for initiative at this point. Speaking about initiative, because of how useful it is, especially since one of the most powerful enemies late game, the Steel Guardian Golems, have super high dexterity for high initiative, I would much rather just pick the Alert feat for plus 5 to it, which ensures our Lazel will act before almost any enemy, even late game. But of course there's other choices if you want, I mean I already have a guide for the best feats you can check here. And any spells, of course. Now, before getting into the best gear, let's do a quick section on the best wizard spells to prepare as our Lazel Fighter Mage. Shield is always a must-have. 
to prevent enemy attacks from hitting you when you need it the most as a reaction. Find Familiar can be quite handy, the Raven Familiar for example can fly and inflict blind, a crippling debuff on hit without a save. Speaking about summon spells, as I said this character can be a summoner, and for that we have almost all of the summon spells as a wizard. Animate that for the skellies or ghouls, conjure minor elemental for the double methods, and conjure elemental for the highly powerful elemental myrmidon or the normal elementals. The good thing about the summon spells is, you don't have to keep them prepared, right? Just cast them, and then you can free the slots for something else, as you'll still get to retain all of your summons. After all, you can prepare spells at will so long as it's not during battle. Besides that, wizards have some very powerful buffs as early as the second level, especially Blur and Mirror Image. Mirror Image will increase your AC to the max and doesn't require concentration, but will be reduced whenever the enemies attack you. While Blur does require concentration, but will provide disadvantage on all enemy attack rolls against you, amazing for defenses. Ideally, you definitely want both Blur and Mirror Image as early as level 4 with this build, because that is when you get to cast level 2 wizard spells. And Large Person can be quite a handy spell for increasing damage, but only if you have someone else that can cast the highly OP haste on you, because both require concentration and eventually once you get haste at level 5, well you kinda won't want anything other than that, haste is that good. Meanwhile, both Magic Missile and Scorching Ray can provide decent enough single target damage as you can upscale them to the max, level 6 for the highest amount of rays fired. Counter spell is very powerful as a reaction to block enemy spells, and you can even get stuff like fireball or chain lightning for area of effect damage, although you won't really have high DC as a wizard, but you can just get gear that increases it if you really want to go that path. And the rest is mostly utility spells as I've covered before. Alright, now let us cover gear for our Lazel Ultimate Gish Fighter Mage. For the helmet slot, ideally the warped headband of intellect to set your intelligence to 17. By having higher intelligence, you'll get to prepare a lot more wizard spells. Even if your spell slot progression will be maxed out anyways, it's a different thing. Plus you can get this super early at the Goblin Blighted Village very early in Act 1 even. You have 7 slots to prepare, if we were to remove the headband, it's only 3 now. After all, we did dump intelligence just because of this headband. There's other options as well, including the Haste Helm for higher movement early, and ultimately, either the Helm of Baldurin for regeneration, immunity to critical hits and higher AC, or of course, Seravox Helm for higher critical range. After all, we do hit very hard with this build. If you get a critical, well, the enemy is pretty much toast. There's not that many cloaks that are important for this type of character, I just have the cloak of protection here for some extra AC. Although you have mirror image and blur for that, so you might as well leave this to another character if you want. It's just that besides that we only have, what, the vivacious cloak for some temporary hit points whenever casting a spell while in melee range. For armor you have a few different options, Hell Dusk later on because it doesn't require proficiency and is the best heavy armor, or even the luminous armor can work because we get some sources of radiant damage including smites, and well, the medium armors that have uncapped dexterity bonuses, like armor of agility just in case you want, but frankly any good medium armor works here. I also like the ones that increase initiative. As for gloves, you have a few different options, ideally early on you want to focus on the gloves of the Growling Underdog to force advantage on all of your attacks when you are surrounded by two or more foes, very easy when you are at melee range anyways, as this can really help reduce the Great Weapon Master penalty to attack rolls. You can of course equip the gloves of dexterity as well to set your dex to 18, and as I said before, when you get these gloves, you can respect your Lazel to dump dexterity and focus into something else, like for example higher intelligence as you not have to rely on the warped headband of intellect. But ultimately, for Act 3, you can also go with the gloves of Frost Giant's strength to set your strength to the max, in which case yes, you can also respect <laughs> to take points away from strength into something else, that's the logic. Of course, when it comes to strength, you can just rely on the giant elixirs, 
It's just that this prevents you from using the Bloodlust Elixir, which I find way better for this type of build. Last but not least, don't forget the Wondrous Gloves to grant you an extra use of Bardic Inspiration, which of course means more Flourish Spamage. For boots, there aren't that many good ones, I would just get Vital Conduit for extra hit points whenever you cast a spell that requires concentration. Or you know, the boots that grant Misty Step for free, like the Disintegrating Nightwalkers. Even something like Helldusk boots later on, they don't matter that much. For amulets, Broodmother's Revenge is my preferred choice, after all you can get it during Act 1. And well, it's an extra 1d4 poison damage added to your weapon whenever you get healed. From any source, really, even your own healing spells, but I'd rather use this from a cleric. But anyways, 1d4 is 1d4. There's of course the Amulet of Restoration or the Amulet of Misty Step. For rings, the Strange Conduit, as always for an extra 1d4 psychic damage on hit whenever concentrating on a spell, very easy with this build. And you have a few different options, Callus Glow for an additional 2 points of radiant damage, the Caustic Band for 2 acid, and the classic Risky Ring for advantage on all attacks. Lastly, the Coruscation Ring so that whenever you cast spells, while the enemy is illuminated by a light source, They'll be hit with the highly powerful Radiating Orb debuff, just like my Nuclear Tank build. If you combine this with, let's say, upcast variants of Scorching Ray or Magic Missile, which fire multiple rays per cast, you can debuff the enemies by what? Minus 7 to their attack rolls, with just one cast. Oh, I almost forgot, but as far as the Talisman, you can as always rely on the Amulet of Greater Health for higher hit points. Now let's cover weapons and consumables. For weapons, I decided to go with great swords, they fit Lazel, and they are pretty powerful weapons, unlike in Pathfinder. The cleave ability you get as early as level 1 is also nice for hitting multiple enemies, even if it's only once per short rest. Anyways, ultimately, Baldurin's Giant Slayer is definitely the best pick here, because it will double the damage boost you get from your strength modifier and we have a very high amount. The benefits don't just stop there, because the giant form ability, usable once per short rest, that's 4 times for this build per long rest, will not only highly increase your damage, but also give you a massive amount of temporary hit points. It doesn't require concentration and lasts very long, which means you want to prep buff with this, instead of wasting an action in battle doing so. And you even have a special ability to knock large targets down while dealing higher damage. Of course, this is Act 3 only, but before that we have some other options. The classic Everburn Blade you can get from the Prologue, for extra fire damage on hit. Or you know, just dip whatever great sword you have on fire, it works as early as level 1. Especially by having a torch equipped and just dropping it on the ground. The Githyanki Great Sword also Act 1 for extra psychic damage, because well, Lazel is a Githyanki. And these are the ones I enjoy the most. Don't forget the Silver Sword of the Astral Plane, the ultimate Githyanki Great Sword. It's just that I really prefer the Giant Slayer. But hey, you can cheese the game well enough to acquire this as early as Act 1. As far as ranged weapons, as always, the Dead Shot for higher critical range. But early game, the Titan String Bow can be quite handy because it deals additional damage equal to your Strength modifier, thus combining both Dexterity and Strength. And well, we have high stats in both. For consumables, honestly, it's all about the Elixir of Bloodlust. This build, well, it won't have the best attacks per turn, but it also won't have the worst, right? With Bloodlust and Haste, you get what? Around 9 to 10 attacks. All because of your Flourish, Sword Spart ability. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Lazel Ultimate Fighter Mage Gish Guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.